Alright, welcome to part 3 of how to play and win at Unfair. Now, in the previous part, we learned that we need to choose one themed deck of cards for each player. Each player can choose which deck they prefer based upon the strategies indicated on the top of the themed deck. Then, you split the themed deck into its component parts, the mini decks. The event cards go here, city cards go here, blueprint cards go here, park cards go here. And then each player also receives two showcase cards, a loan card, a gate card, and a summary card. Then we learn that you choose another deck for the next player. You place the cards in the same spots, you shuffle them all together. You have to choose just four of the blue cards and four of the red cards in the city deck, placing the others aside, of course face down, so you don't know which ones are here and which ones aren't. These indicate each round, each card's a round, and when the cards are gone, the rounds are done and the game is over. Basic games have eight rounds, four with the blue city cards, then that separation card, which we'll talk about later, and then those four red cards. Now, I've sort of reorganized the board, so we have player one over there, and player two over here. Now, the orientation of your cards is very important, as you'll see as we begin the game. The gate card always goes down at the bottom, kind of near the middle of the board. Loan goes on top of it, and the scoring summary goes to the left of the loan card. Don't put the scoring summary here, you'll need this space later. Don't put anything to the right of this, you'll need this spot later. And then the showcase cards can kind of just sit over here upside down. We still haven't looked at them as players because we're not done with the setup. In the previous step, we did basic setup. The cards are taken care of. But now we also need to go ahead and choose a game changer. Now over here in the, uh, in the game, we have these little tiny decks of cards, and there's a bunch more of those in the expansion box as well. And these are called game changer cards because they affect the way that you set up the game and they affect the way the entire game is played. Now, we're going to talk about these in more detail later, but this one right here that says first date is always supposed to be played whenever there's a player who's new to the game. So if you have four people in the game, and three of them have played before but one hasn't, you still need to use this card to make the game simpler. Now note, it gives some instructions that says remove two unfair city cards from the bottom of the city deck to reduce the game to six rounds. Six rounds. Remember when we talked about rounds? That's how many cards are in this deck. So if you have a new player in the game, you simply remove two more of those red cards. That makes the game shorter and a little bit less unfair. Remember in part one of this series, I talked about how there's ways to make the game less unfair and more fun? Well, this is one of the ways. But remember, we're doing it officially. We're using this Game Changer card, and we're following the instructions. You shouldn't make any modifications to the game itself unless you've watched through this entire series and you thoroughly understand how the game works. There's a reason why all of these rules and instructions are in place. It's because it, the game is more balanced that way. Now let's see what else it says. So we've reduced the game to six rounds, and now there's four blue city cards, a separator, and only two red cards, so the game is a little bit more fair and less unfair. Now it says remove all showcase cards. Now showcase cards are these ones right here, right? These are the mysterious upside down ones that we had to kind of shuffle and give to each player. We're going to remove those for now because they add a layer of complexity to the game that we're not ready for quite yet. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. We're going to forget about them now. So now we only have to worry about these three cards for each player. Next, what does it say? It says now remove blueprint cards marked difficult or insane. All right. So we're going to have a quick talk about blueprint cards. Now, blueprint cards here, we're going to talk later about how you actually get blueprint cards, but notice they all have a little stamp on the bottom left. This one says easy, this one says difficult, that one says medium. It tells us we need to remove the difficult ones. Now, why is that? Well, it's because blueprints are a way of earning victory points at the end of the game. See, if you complete this section of the blueprint, you get 29 victory points at the end of the game. If you also complete this section, you get 25 more. That's a lot of victory points. But you have to meet certain qualifications first. Your park has to have a monorail, in this case, with two superior quality upgrades. Now, we're going to talk about what that means. I know you're a bit confused, but don't worry about it. The point is, is that it's more difficult to complete cards that have a higher difficulty rating. So what we're doing in this game with that Game Changer card, because we have somebody who hasn't played before, which in this case is you, is we're just removing all of the difficult cards, and any that might say insane. Let's see if there are any. I don't think there are any. Medium, medium, easy. All right. So these are the ones that are difficult. 
we're just going to go ahead and take those out so that nobody, if somebody does try to complete a blueprint or earn victory points, it's not going to be too hard for them to do. So we're going to go ahead and just reshuffle those and put them back over here. All right, let's go back to this card. We've met all the requirements. We've reduced the game to six rounds by removing two red city cards. We've removed the showcase cards and any difficult or insane blueprint cards. Now, once we follow the instructions on this first date card, we're done. But at the bottom of some cards in this game, there's a little bit of flavor text. And this is where I talked about Joel Finch's sense of humor in part one of this series. He says, short and sweet. Let's hope for no awkward silences and no checking phones at the table. Now, of course, this isn't actually a first date, right? The, 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 mean of the meaning of this card is just that we have somebody who's never played the game before. But it's funny because he, the flavor text kind of insinuates that this is a first date, perhaps. So we're going to place this game changer over here next to the theme top cards of the different theme decks. So we remember that this is the card that kind of changed the game during Setup Force. Now we're going to talk about these other game changing cards in other episodes of the series, not to worry about them. But basically all you need to know is at the beginning of each game, you need to play with a game changer. You don't have to, but it, it helps. And you can only choose one game changer. That's why we only did first date. First date you should always play with if you have a player who's new to the game. It makes the blueprints easier. It removes the complexity of these showcase cards that we took away. It just makes the game shorter and more fun. And that way somebody can learn the rules. We're going to do that. We're going to pretend that you're the new player and um, that you've never played before. So we're using the first date game changer card. But you can only have one game changer card per game. So next game you won't be a, f a newbie anymore. So we'll play with a different game changer. All right. But just know that the setup is always the same. The game changer come cards comes in after you've set up, and it maybe takes things away or adds things. Now, remember I said earlier, you can the blueprints are one way to earn money, and we kind of looked at briefly at what a blueprint is. We'll talk more about it later. You can build bigger cities, um, I mean bigger attractions, but we also have been talking about money. And where's the money? Well, it's back in the box. Now, kind of like in Monopoly, you start with a set amount of money. But unlike Monopoly, in this game, you don't just get more money every round by passing go. You're actually going to have to work for whatever money you get after the initial starting amount. Now, we have four different values of coin tokens here. You notice that there's a 1, maybe that represents 1 million, 100 million, who knows. 5, 25, and 125. Do you see a pattern here? You probably don't, but I'll tell you what it is. 25 is exactly 20% 20 of 125. 5 is exactly 20% 20 of 25. And 1 is 20% of 5. Now, in the gangster deck, this will come into handy because we might have to do some, some things where money will multiply at 20% rate. So the amounts of these coins is already figured out for us. All we need to know is that 1 is 20% of 5, 5 is 20% of 25, 25 is 20% of 125, less math. We have to do that way. All right. Now, each player will start with 20 coin. So they'll need three fives to make 15 and five ones to make the additional five plus 15 equals 20. So I'm going to go ahead and get each player three fives and five ones. All right. So I've given each player their 20 coins. Three fives and five ones. 15 plus five equals 20. Now I've poured the rest of the coins into this dish here so that they're easily accessible throughout the rest of the game. There's rarely going to be any games where somebody has 125 coin all once needing one of these massive tokens. So we're just going to put these back in the box for later if we need them. And these will be easily accessible throughout the game. This is the bank. It doesn't belong to any particular player. All right. So now we have some starting money for each player. And we now need a starting player marker. So in the base game, we get two of these admit one tokens, but we only need one. And we set it up with this nice plastic base right there. Just push that in, and we're going to keep one of these. These are just backup tokens, which we probably won't need, but we're going to keep them in the box just in case. So we'll slide those over there, put them away. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, we have completed setup. Let's really quickly review what we've done in this step. We have explained how to use the Game Changer card. We've explained that you need one Game Changer card per game, and only one. We've made the necessary changes following the rules on the Game Changer card. We've looked at flavor text and Joel Finch's sense of humor. We've put all of the coins in a bank and given each player a starting value of 20 coin. We've also 
placed the set up the starting marker and the round tracker. The round tracker is going to go at the very far left end of this timeline right here. And the starting player marker is going to go to one player. All right. I'll see you in the next step.